greeting brothers and sisters. Uh, it has been long since we last got together. We still trust God to meet in the near future. Um, I thank God for this wonderful morning and I give you a warm welcome to our English service at Potter's Hand and I invite you to share, to, 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 to join us as we share the word of God. Let's pray as we start. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you've given us to study your word, to listen to your word. It's our prayer that your Holy Spirit will minister to each one listening and to me who is speaking, may your Holy Spirit inspire me to bring forth the oracles of the word of God, that our lives will be transformed, changed, and encouraged by your word. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, you remember we are in the season where the whole world is celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's just a few days to the day, D-Day, which is the Christmas day, that the entire world will be celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And today is not Christmas, but I want to share a message that is in line with the season of Christmas when we celebrate his birth. Uh, we will be based on the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 11 to verse 12. Let me read. Luke chapter 2, verse 11 to 12 reads, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, comma, which is Christ the Lord. Verse 12, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. So the, the people who are going to see Jesus born, the angel told them a description of who they are going to see. And the Bible says that a child is born on, the, on this day in the city of David, but it goes on to talk about three Three titles of Jesus that I want to bring up. Three key words. The first word is a savior. The second word is Christ. And the third word is the Lord. So it's very good to see Jesus in these three areas. And the Bible says, and this will be a sign for you. Verse 12, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. So it's good to see that as Jesus is lying in a manger, it is a sign of these three key things that we are going to find in Jesus Christ, and that is the Savior, Christ, and the Lord. The word Jesus means God saves. The word Jesus is the same as Joshua in the Bible. Joshua is the same as Jesus, and it means God saves. And then they, they call him Christ. Christ means the anointed one, the one who has been anointed. And now third word is the Lord, Jesus as the Lord. So it's very good to, see, to, to ask oneself what Jesus is to them. Is Jesus a baby lying in a manger? Is Jesus the king? Is Jesus the Lord? Is Jesus the savior? Is Jesus the, the anointed one, the Christ in your life? So when we receive Christ in our lives, when we say that I invited Jesus in my life, we invite him as the Savior, we invite him as the Lord, and we invite him as the Christ, the anointed one who breaks the yokes. The Bible says by the anointing, the yokes shall be broken, and by the anointing, that all the chains shall be broken. Because of the anointing, the, the burden shall be lifted. So when I receive him as Christ, I receive him as the anointed one, whom the Bible says, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor and to set free the captives. When we receive him as the Christ, we receive him as the anointed one who takes our burdens away, who sets us free, who breaks every yoke, who breaks every chain. That is the Christ. And we receive him as the Savior. When we receive him as the Savior, it means we have received one who saves us from our sins, who saves us from, from damnation, from destruction, from eternal death, who gives us eternal life. But not only that, we also receive him as Lord, as Master, as one who is going to govern our lives, to lead us into the will of the Father then that is the time when he's Lord. So many times we want to receive Jesus as a savior, one who saves us from sins, one who gives us eternal life, one who's, who saves us from destruction. But rarely do we want him to be the Lord, the master of our lives. 
And today I can't talk about all the three aspects, Christ, Savior, and Lord. I'm simply going to embark on one word, Christ the Lord. And on Christmas, you need to follow up this Christmas message. I'll be talking about Jesus as the Savior. But now I want to talk about Jesus as the Lord. And when we read in the Bible, we see in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 36. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 36, the Bible says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So, in this, this is a scripture where a man called Peter, Simon, was speaking to a multitude of people who had gathered on the day of Pentecost. So Peter spoke to them and said, Therefore let, it all, let all Israel be assured this, God has made this Jesus. This Jesus, remember the word Jesus means God saves. God has made this Savior. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So we want to see Jesus as Lord in our lives. And Jesus desires to be master in our lives. When we invite him in our lives, he wants to take control. He wants to take the lead. He wants to govern. He doesn't want to come and be just a spectator in our lives. He wants to come into our lives as Lord of our lives. And that's why the Bible says we need to know that God has made this Jesus Lord and Christ. So when I receive Christ in my life, when I receive Jesus in my life, I want to enthrone him to be the Lord over my life. And that's why Jesus told his disciples, those who are following him, those who chose to believe in him, in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. The Bible says in the New International Version, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So when Jesus is becoming Lord in our lives, it means he's going to take the lead. It means he's going to govern our lives. It means we are choosing to enthrone him to be the master of our lives. We cease to lead ourselves and we allow him to take the lead in our lives, to govern our lives. And he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? He doesn't want us to call him Lord. He wants us to make him Lord, to allow him to be Lord in our everyday affair of our lives. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So when I choose to enthrone Jesus to be Lord of my life, it means I am choosing to allow him to govern my life, that whatever he says no, I will let it go. And whatever he commands me to do, I will do it in obedience and loving obedience. Not because I'm forced to, but because I willingly choose to allow him to be the master of my life. That means there are things I will stop doing if I know that my master is not pleased by those things. There are places I will cease to go to if I know that my master doesn't want me to go to those places. There are things I will cease to talk about if my master doesn't want me to talk about those things. Because he's my master, he's my boss, he's my lord, he's my king, he's my ruler. That means that I live in submission to his will. That is when Jesus becomes Lord in our lives. And we need to know that Jesus is either Lord of all or not Lord at all. Either Jesus is Lord of all, Jesus is Lord over all, or he's not Lord at all. He wants to be Lord in the entire, in all spheres of my lives, in my lives. He, I mean my life, sorry. He needs, I need to know that Lord Jesus is Lord in my financial affairs. The Lord Jesus is Lord in my relationships. Jesus is Lord in my businesses. Jesus is Lord in my family life. Jesus is Lord in my workplace. Jesus is Lord in all the aspects of my life. I don't have to allow Jesus to be Lord only in spheres of life that I want him to. And then I, dis, I, 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 I kind of not allow him to tackle some areas of my life. He should be Lord over all. 
not Lord in some areas, in some aspects, and not in all. There are times we see, we, we, we see him as Lord in our calling life, in my, our ministry life, and we don't see him as Lord when it comes to our businesses. We don't see him as Lord in our relationships. We don't see him as Lord in our working environment. But Jesus wants to be Lord over all. And right now, I want to share with us five areas where Jesus wants to be Lord over my life. The Jesus that we'll be celebrating on Christmas. Then that's when it makes sense when we see him both as Lord and as a Savior. The simplest way to understand Jesus as Lord over your mind is to ask, what is his thought on what I am thinking right now? What is Jesus' thought on what I am thinking right now? So Jesus wants to reach a point of being Lord even in our thinking world, in our thoughts, in our thought life. Because you realize most sins are made in our thoughts. They are fabricated in our thoughts. And if Jesus could lead, could be master of our thoughts, then we won't find ourselves falling in sin all the time because he will lead right from our thought life. And the simplest way to understand Jesus as Lord of our mind is ask, what is the thought of Jesus on what I am thinking right now? For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. That is 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9 in the New International Version says, For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. So if we could know that Jesus searches every heart and understands every motive behind every thought, then I would be so mindful on the kind of thoughts that I, I, I entertain in my life. And then I will start to eliminate some thoughts that I know that I don't glorify my Lord. Since I know that he sees them, he knows them, and probably he's not happy about these thoughts that I'm thinking about. So the first area that I want to enthrone Jesus to be Lord over my life is the area of my thoughts, my mind. For the Lord to be the master of my thoughts, of my mind. When evil thoughts come, I need to remember that in 1 Chronicles 28, 9 it says, For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. When I remember that, I will start to know that even my thought life is governed by this Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then the second area that Jesus wants to be Lord of our lives is our bodies, your body, my body. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, in the New International Version, the Bible says, Therefore, honor God with your body. I don't, own, I don't, I, I, I don't have to honor God only with my, my song, not only with my prayers, not only with my preachings and sermons. The Lord Jesus wants me to honor him with my body. The way my body, I mean, my, 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 the way I use my body to remember that my body is a vessel that glorifies God. And everything that doesn't glorify God should not be entertained, should not be allowed to take possession of my body or my body to do anything that doesn't, not, does not glorify my maker, my God, my Savior. For there, there are for honor God with your body. Any sinful thing that, that doesn't glorify God or any other thing that doesn't glorify God ha, does, does not have to be uh, housed or entertained by my body. So therefore, I need to honor God with my body. Remember, the first area is our mind and the second area is our body. And now the third area is our decision making. Acts chapter 22 verse 10 says, so Saul, when he fell to the ground after being blinded by the bright light from heaven, asked, what shall I do, Lord? When we know Paul, who happened to be Saul before he was converted, he encountered Jesus on his way to Damascus. And when he encountered Jesus in the bright, shining light, the Bible says he fell on the ground with his face down. The Bible says when he had been blinded, these are the words he said, what shall I do, Lord? 
In other words, what is the next step that I need to take, Lord? Remember, G this man Saul was on the way to persecute the church. He was going to persecute the believers, the Simon, Peter, and the rest. But when he encountered Jesus, when he saw the bright light, when he encountered the glory of the Lord, he fell down on the ground and he said, what shall I do, Lord? From that moment, his life took a different course from what he had been living and what he had been doing before. He started to live another life. He lived a life that was going to glorify his maker, to glorify his Lord, to glorify his master from that time on because he said, what shall I do, Lord? That should be our everyday prayer. That should be our everyday desire. That in our everyday decision making, we seek the will of our God. We seek the, lead of our, the will of our master. That we ask him in our prayer, what shall I do, Lord? What should I do, my master? What do you want me to do in this business? What do you want me to do today? And that's a time we reach when every morning, when we wake up, we need to have a time, a quiet moment with the Lord our quiet time with God, before we go into so many activities, before we remember who owes us money, before we remember all the meetings we have, to, to, to first ask ourselves, Lord, what do you want me to do today? In my businesses, what do you want me to do? In this meeting we're going to go to, what do you want me to do? Seeking the will of our God in our decision making. So Jesus wants to be the Lord even in our decision making. Remember, number one is our thought life. Number two, our body. And number three, our decision making. And then it comes to number four. Number four, where area where Jesus wants to be Lord over our lives is our finance, your finance, my finance. Jesus wants us not to make money the God of our life. Instead, he's asking us to store up treasures in heaven. And you see that in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21, he teaches his disciples and tells them we should not serve mammon, we should not serve money, we should not serve riches, Rather, we should make Jesus, we should make God our Lord and store up treasures in heaven where they cannot be eaten by moth or any other thing. So he wants us to allow him even the area of our finances, in the area of our businesses. He wants to be involved in those aspects, not only to be involved as a stranger, but to be involved as a Lord who is leading us. By the way, God is the master of business. He knows business more than we do. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17, he says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you how to profit and I go before you to show you the way you should go. So he understands business. He's actually the author of business. And that's why Jesus, when he was teaching his people, the disciples, he told them about the, the, the story, the parable of the talents. And he told the one who never made profit out of it and told him, why don't you, didn't you even take it to the bank and get some interest out of this? That means that he understands business. He's the author of business. He wants us to make him Lord, even in our financial life, in our business dealings, in our, in our everyday business dealings. Do we remember that he's Lord over all? Remember we said Christ is either Lord over all or not Lord at all. So he needs to be Lord over all. And number five, as the, I come to a conclusion, the area where God, I mean Jesus wants to be Lord in our lives is your work, my work, my everyday work. The, the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 23, the Bible say, tells us that whatever we do, we need to do it as unto God, remembering that we glorify God even in our work. Your daily work is an area where you should exhibit the lordship of Jesus. Not in my worship time, not in my prayer moment in church, not on Sunday when we gather for worship. How do you exhibit God, Jesus, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday? 
before you come to Sunday. It's very good to know that God wants to be glorified, to be magnified in our everyday life. He wants to be magnified in our working environment. Because in your work, you are serving the Lord Christ. That's what Colossians 3, 23 says. You are serving Christ. So in our everyday work, in our every, the area of our work, we need to exhibit the Lordship of Jesus. Therefore, do all your work with excellence so that others will see it and praise God. That's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible says, we are the light of the world. And let your light so shine before all men that when they see your good work, they will praise your Father in heaven. Do you exhibit the Lordship of Jesus at your place of work? Does your boss know that Jesus is your Lord? Jesus is your master? Do, do your workmates know that Jesus is Lord? Do your colleagues know that Jesus is Lord? Jesus needs to be Lord over all. Either Lord over all or not Lord at all. Remember when Jesus was being tempted, when he went to pray and fast 40 days and 40 nights, the devil came to him and he tested him with three temptations. The first temptation was when he told him, now you are hungry, turn this stone into bread and eat it. But Jesus refused to turn bread, I mean stone into bread and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And then the devil told him, now he took him up the hill and showed him the glories of the world, the riches of the world, the wealth of the world, and the kingdoms of this world, the luxury of this world, and all the beauties of this world, and told him, if you can only worship, worship me, I'm going to give all these things to you. And Jesus said, no, I can't worship you because it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Brothers and sisters, it's very good to know that whichever work you, whatever work you're doing, that there, are two, there is either one of these two bosses. It's either God or the devil. The rest of the bosses are intermediaries. Whatever I'm doing, I need to know, is this glorifying God or exalting the devil? If it is glorifying God, then I'm serving God. Some, many times we think that serving God is serving in church, singing in the choir, ushering people, but I need to know whatever I do, if I do it for the glory of God, I am serving God. And that's why Jesus refused to worship the devil and said, it is written, you shall worship God and him alone shall you serve. Him alone shall you serve. Every morning when you wake up going to work, do you ever ask yourself, who am I serving? Am I serving God? Am I serving the devil? So there are two bosses, not three, not four, not five, but two bosses. Whatever initiative you're going to do, you need to ask yourself, who is it glorifying? I want to glorify God with my work. If you go to the hospital and you're a doctor and you choose to treat people with this heart, knowing I'm doing all this to please my maker, to please my Lord, just know you're busy serving God. If you are a judge in the courts of law and sitting on the, on the judge's seat and you're saying, I want to make this judgment in a manner that glorifies my God, just know you are serving God. If you are a boss at work and you say, I want to treat these workers in a, ma a manner that glorifying is glorifying my maker, just know you are serving God. If you're a teacher and you're teaching these kids and you say, I want to teach these kids in a manner that glorifies my God, just know you are serving God. God. So when we talk about serving God, it doesn't mean to be a priest. It doesn't mean to be a singer in the church. It means doing whatever you do with a motive, with an intention to glorify your maker. That's why Jesus said, it is written, you shall worship God and him alone shall you serve. So you need to ask, is Jesus Lord even in my work environment, in my work life? So if Jesus 
is going to be Lord in our lives, remember these five areas, he needs to be area, I mean, he needs to be Lord over my mind. And we said the best way to know that he's Lord over my mind is to ask myself this question. What is Jesus' thought over what I am thinking right now? That will bring you back on the right track. There are some thoughts that will be rejected right away because you've asked yourself a wonderful question. What is Jesus, my master, thinking about the thoughts that I'm thinking right now? Because we know, for the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. May Jesus, who we are going to be celebrating as Christmas comes on, on, uh, this week on the 25th, may we celebrate him not only as a baby in the manger, but to celebrate him as Jesus, as Christ, and as the Lord. And today, I've just talked about celebrating him as Lord over our lives. As we celebrate, celebrate Jesus, not only as a baby in a manger, but as Lord of our lives. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.